Let's discover how an algorithm can optimize a neural network for us. In this video, I'll explain the backpropagation algorithm and how it can be used to optimize neural networks. If you haven't seen it yet, go check my video on neural networks. It is a great introduction and you'll have a better understanding of what I am talking about now. I used Godot to run the algorithm and create visualizations. Stick till the end to see some cool examples. You'll also get access to the source code if you want to play around on your own. Let's take it easy and start with a simple perception. I set the number of inputs to 3 and I put the formulas here, they will be useful. So A is the activation and it is the output of the perception. By the way, we can get rid of the bias. We will consider it as a simple wave with an input of 1. It allows us to optimize only weight and no biases, which is much easier. So B0 is W3 multiplied by 1. I call Z the weighted sum of inputs. Last but not least, the activation function is a sigmoid. We'll need the derivate of it, so here it is. Note that this derivate is extremely easy to compute. Good point for the performances. Let's choose a training data. I choose 0 0.5, 0 0.2 and 0 0.7 for the three inputs and y equal 0 0.34 for the output. We initiate the perception with random weight. As expected, the output is not equal to the desired output. Let's introduce a measure to quantify how bad is our result. I call it e as it is an error. The mean square error is pretty common to use but not that it is possible to use other error measurement functions. As we only have one output, E equal A minus Y squared. Now our goal is to decrease the error. How can we modify the weight to do so? Let's start with one weight. We'll try to optimize W0. I vary it so we can see the error in function of this weight. As you can see, there is a minimum here and our goal is to reach it. If we can compute the slope of the error, then we just have to decrease the weight when the error increase and increase the weight when the error decrease, right? So let's calculate this slope. It is the partial derivative of E depending on W0, which is represented like so. As we don't have W0 directly in the error formula, we can decompose the partial derivative with A. Again, it is quite difficult to compute the partial derivative of A depending on W0, so let's use our intermediate variable Z. Now we can evaluate each term All of this results in this formula. I introduce the learning rate and finally W0 will be updated by adding delta W0 to it, with delta W0 being equal to minus eta times the partial derivative of E depending on W0. The minus sign is here to decrease W0 when E increase and vice versa as I said before. We can do the same for each weight and we already have our algorithm ready to run. Awesome, so let's run it in our example. As you can see, it is changing the weight and if we iterate it a certain amount of time, it finds a really good result. If it's all good for you, let's now try with a full neural network. There are a lot more ways, so let's organize things a bit. First, we separate the layers and there are two layers of weight. For each layer, we store the weight in a matrix called WL, where WIG, the element at row number I and column number G, is the weight leading from neuron number I of layer L-1 to neuron number G of layer L. It is almost all the same. I write the formula for the partial derivative with the new notations. There is only this last term which can be different. If neuron is in the last layer, which means it is an output, nothing changes. But if it is not the case, 
AGL is not in the error function, so we need once again to calculate partial derivatives. The real backpropagation happens here. We compute the variation of error depending on higher layers, so we can finally reach the output layer and use the formula we already have. In other terms, we are backpropagating the error to each weight through the layers. For the implementation, I took an existing Python code, the link is in the description of course, and arranged it in GDScript. Let me explain the code very quickly. First, we create the weight matrices. We use dictionaries so we can store all the stuff later and we add the layers to the network. Then we create the activation function and its derivative. First, we need to forward propagate to compute the error. We store the output of each neuron on the dictionary so we don't have to compute those multiple times. As the last layer is the output, we will return it. Now we can do the back propagation. We loop through all layers starting from the output, so in reverse. For each, we store the back propagated error in the dictionary. Then we can update the weight with the learning rate. And finally, we put all of this together in the train network function. Here we do the backpropagation for each data in the training data set, one after the other. Now let's watch some examples. There are two ways to use this algorithm, either for classification, the goal is to differentiate individuals, or for regression, the goal is to approximate some values. A simple regression example is to approximate logical operation. Let's take the OR for example. It has two inputs and one output. And here is the corresponding training dataset. For 0 and 0, it should give 0. 0 and 1 gives 1, 1 and 0 gives 1, and for 1 and 1, it should output 1, 2. I start the algorithm. At the beginning, the result is not that great, but then you can see the algorithm improves the result and finally we are getting really close outputs. We can do the same for other logical operations. I just increased the number of neurons because it was struggling a bit. For classification, we simply set the number of outputs of the neural network to the number of classes we need. Given an input, the output class is the greater of all output neurons. And for training data, we set desired output to zero for each, except for the neuron representing the target class, which will be equal to one. Here we can see it in action, on a pretty simple example, but it is doing great. So let's complicate things a bit. This dataset is way more challenging. I added a layer to tackle this complexity and it managed to find the result I wanted. Notice that depending on the random initialization, the final result can change as you can see. And sometimes we end up with a pretty bad result. This is because the cost function is not convex, which means there are some local minimums. 
and if the algorithm is initiated near one, it will fall into this local minimum and never try to explore other possibilities. This is a limit of this algorithm, which can be overcome if you launch the algorithm multiple times and take the best results. You can see other cool example with three classes. I love the way each class is appearing. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and learned new things. If so, I encourage you to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one. Also leave a comment, I always answer and it motivates me a lot. The source code is available on GitLab, the link is in the description, see you soon.